Which one is that? Kelly, do you know whether David's uh, going to attend today? You're you're uh, you're on mute. My apologies for uh, us being a little late, uh, Mr. Chair. Mary Kay and I were just giving a very high level summary and Mary Kay did an excellent job of going through it. And uh, well, you, you must have blown through the budget in what, 15 minutes and gave a good overview, but to uh, some municipal facilitators. Um, well, we're about no halfway through. <laughs> 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 yeah, then, uh, I'll tell you, that I, I only have one more uh, bit of information before we begin, Mr. Chair. Uh, Maurice, um, apparently something has come up in uh, Fundy. And uh, um, Red, just so you know, we're being recorded at the moment. I, 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 I caught that. Just, I'm sorry. Uh, and th thanks, Greg. Um, um, but he has something that's come up, and uh, he's otherwise engaged, and he's going to be unable to attend this uh, this meeting. Okay. And um, Mr. Chair, I I don't know whether or not Mr. Duplessis is going to attend or not. Okay. Well, it's two o three, so I'll call the meeting to order. Uh, could we have a, an approval of for the agenda? Approved. I'll second the approval. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Contrary the same. Does anyone have any conflict of interest uh, to declare today with regard to the agenda that we're about to embark upon? Okay. Having heard none then we are going to continue or move on to the draft 2023 20, budget and i believe mary Kay is going to lead that but brent did you have anything you wanted to say before we sure yeah the, th thank you mr chair I, i'll just uh just quickly note that obviously this is an unusual year as far as the uh, budget approval uh process uh, <laughs> as I, i'm sure we're all aware um it um this year, unlike previous years, the budget will in fact be approved by the uh, by the minister, and uh, therefore there will be no need for a motion uh, at the end of the meeting to uh, to um, recommend approval to the uh, to the board and board on for the uh, for the September eighth meeting. So, I'd just like to remind the uh, the committee of that uh, before we start through the material. Um, in essence. The, uh, the purpose of this meeting and uh, the purpose of the, uh, the wider board meeting on September 8th will be for uh, review and for input. Um, if there are some suggestions and an opportunity to answer questions. Sorry, uh, Greg. Um, do you know why the minister's approving the budget this year? Is this because we're shifting to a new board on January 1st with new members and such? That's, that's an excellent question. And I, I believe that's part of the rationale. It was also felt that uh, potentially um, keep in mind that this is a uh, province wide endeavor, uh, not not specific to RSC and 11. And so while we often um, have a, a very smooth process that ends up in a approved budget by October 20th or so, um, some commissions um, um, their schedules don't allow for that, and then it results in an approval process that may uh, conclude in November. Um, oh, okay. th this year, with the new municipalities, uh, I think the uh, the province's goal was to um, expedite that approval process and ensure that the municipalities had the numbers that they would need for budgeting purposes um, um, to develop their own budgets prior to uh, their own deadline. So, w with that. I'll uh, I'll hand it over to Mary Kay, and Mary Kay can uh, take us through the uh, draft document. Mary Kay, Brett, I'm just going to take a second here and share my screen. Perfect. Everybody can see that. Okay. Yep. Awesome. Yep. Uh, so before I get into the actual 2023 budget, I just want to take a minute and explain the format that we are going to be reviewing. 
Um, if you've been around the board or the finance committee for a number of years, you will notice that it is different from what it usually looks like. Uh, we prepare internal budget documents. Um, and then what we typically do is put it into the provincial format. Um, and we did that this year as well. Um, but we only provided the finance committee originally with the provincial documents. Um, and the reason for that was twofold. The first being ultimately, like Brett mentioned, the minister is going to be the one that approves the budget. So we didn't want to introduce uh, additional information to make that more complicated or why is there multiple um, formats going around. So that's one of the reasons. And the other reason being, we did not receive the provincial format until very late in the game. So it didn't allow us time to put the new services into the format that you're used to seeing. Um, so that's why we're gonna be reviewing the provincial format. Um, Peter did ask that you guys were um, able to, if you were able to get copies of the format that you're usually used to seeing, and that's no problem. Um, if you've reviewed those, I find them personally easier um, to review. Um, and if you have any questions on those as we go through, I'm happy to answer those. Um, but we're going to just stick with the provincial format th today, and I hope that's all right with everyone. So I hope everybody's had a chance to um, uh, look at this overview because it's really the highlight of everything that's changed in the budget in 2023. Um, and it gives you all the information that you need uh, really in one place. So if you have any questions, this would be, um, this should answer your questions. I'm not gonna read it for you in detail because we will hit on most of these points as we go through the various divisions. Um, for the new services, um, we have based those budgets on um, estimated costs that we have received um, from third-party service providers. Um, and those can be, those will uh, be up or down depending on uh, where we actually land uh, when agreements are put in place. Um, so overall, overarching the entire um, budget uh, for all divisions, we have increased salaries by 9%. Um, and I know that seems like a large number uh, when you first hear it, um, but over the last few years, we have fallen behind um, with regard to our inflationary increases for staff. So a 9% increase would put them at the same level of buying power they would have had a few years ago, so three years ago. Um, we are having an issue um, with workers, uh, not specifically in the RSC, but in general. Uh, there's a worker shortage. Um, there's a lot of demand out there. We are seeing that there's lots of opportunity for our staff. Um, we have had three staff resignations in the last couple of weeks. Um, these are some staff members that have been there for a number of years. Um, and keeping good staff is critical to the organization. So um, if we don't uh, provide good service and uh, look after our staff, um, we're not going to be uh, able to provide the level of service that um, we've been used to providing. So we think that this is critical um, to be able to keep them uh, providing the services that you're used to. So without further ado, I'll get right into the numbers. Okay, so this is the format that the province provides to us. Um, it's how we're required to submit the budget to them. And there's a lot of detail in here. It's about 60, 364 pages. So I won't go through all the pages in detail. I'll just try to stick with um, the main ones uh, that provide the detail that you need, you need. This is just a summary of everything that's included. And then this is a summary of all the divisions, uh, letting you know what each division's budget is. So. For our operating budgets, for cooperative and regional services, it's 186,000. And you can see for each division, and it totals 15,684,157,000 at the end of the day. Our capital budget. So most of our divisions are not very capital intensive with the exception of our solid waste, which includes power generation as well. Um, so you can see we've got small amount budgeted for local planning, 1.73 million for solid waste and 1 million for power generation for a total capital budget of 2,737,000. Just gonna get my spotlight out here. So that might help you. 
There we are. All right. This is a form that you're not used to seeing, but basically what it does is it takes our operating budget and it puts it into PSAP. So we are required to have a PSAP budget for our audited financial statements. Um, so this form, which you'll see, and I will note one thing that I'm going to change when this goes to the board, this number right here should have been 186,000 leaving a, uh, a surplus or deficit of zero. Um, so I will change that um, because it's a balanced budget at the end of the day. So if you go to the next page, that budget, which was a surplus or deficit of exactly even, turns into under PSAB a deficit, which will now be with that 20,000 change, $824,097 deficit. And basically that's because you have an amount budgeted for amortization under PSAB, which you didn't have under the municipal standards. It's not like to jump, okay. Sorry. All right, so the first division that we have is the corporate services division. Uh, as I'm sure you're all aware, this is the expenses that benefit the entire organization. So there's no revenue in corporate services. These get allocated out to the various divisions to pay for. So it includes items like uh, CEO salary, executive director salary, CFO salary, um, auditing, board expenses, that kind of thing. So total expenses budgeted for 2023 is 937,136. That compares to 639,978 in 2022. So it is up 297,000. And we'll see the detail behind that in a minute. So that gets allocated out to the various divisions to pay for based on how they use those expenses. Um, with the new um, divisions, we have allocated a portion of that and we'll be fine tuning those in the years to come once we have some experience under our belt. So those are estimated at this point. So you can see um, cooperative and regional planning, local planning, solid waste are paying the majority of those corporate services. There's no revenue. So this is the detail of the expenditures. So board expenses are budgeted at 64,833. That is up from 59,000 in the previous year. Um, and that includes the additional committees for the new services that we'll have, as well as the 9% cost of living adjustment. For administrative expenses, We have an amount for the CEO's office. So salaries and benefits are up significantly. That is the additional CEO position. We also increased audit fees because we will have new divisions. There'll be more work to do with regard to the auditors. And then insurance is up as well. So across all our divisions, we are seeing um, insurance has increased. Um, so in 2022, we did not yet include the cyber policy. So that's new, something that the board approved. Um, so that was an additional 10,000. And then our directors and officers, as well as our errors and omission policies have both increased um, from the last time that they were negotiated. Professional services, that's our IT services, that's up from 25,000. So we've budgeted 40,000 in the current year. The remaining expenses are relatively consistent, giving total administration of 863,729. We have some fiscal services, which include bank charges and the non-refundable portion of HST, totaling 8574, bringing you to that 937,136 that we talked about. There's no capital in corporate services. So that brings us to cooperative and regional planning. So for cooperative and regional planning, um, it consists of two expenses. The first is the allocation from corporate services, which is up from the previous year. And we've budgeted 
20,004 uh, regional planning. So that's what that 186,000 consists of. We have a second previous year surplus of 26,253, leaving 160,599 to be raised from the members. So this cost is allocated based on 50% of your share of the population, 50% on your share of the tax base, giving uh, this being the, the annual member charge that it will cost your specific municipality. So if you're from Arcadia, the annual charge would be 4245. So you can see there's the revenue we talked about, that second previous year surplus of 26,000. You have the allocation from corporate services and the 20,000 from regional planning. So a relatively straightforward budget there. There's no capital, which brings us to the local planning budget. So for 2023, we have a budget of $1,795,039. We have other revenue of $7,000. So if you take that away from $1,795, you get $1,78839 to be raised from the members, keeping in mind that this is only for participating members. So there are three municipalities that do not receive planning and inspection services from us, being Fredericton, Ormocto, and New Maryland. So what that means for the participating members, so if you're from Capital Region Rural District, your share of that cost is $312,160. We have a small amount budgeted for capital, 7,000 for computer equipment, and that will be paid for through operations. So the 7,000 that we talked about is revenue from blue plate sales. So that's your number that you put on your house. There was no second previous year surplus to bring in, giving total revenue of 7,000. On the expenditure side, we have our allocation from corporate services of 215,000. We have uh, the Office of the Planning Director, which also includes um, the administrative staff. Um, in the budget, we are um, hiring one additional administrative staff just to meet the demand of what we're seeing um, with regard to paperwork. Very few changes on the other. The office expenses are up from 124,000 to 142. Um, that includes an increase in rent as well as cleaning expenses. And then for office equipment and supplies, there's an increase to the postage costs. So total administrative um, services expense is up to 693,460 from 635,733. So for planning services, we have a budget of 607,536. You can see the increase is stemming from the salaries and benefit. So that includes um, the increase, the 9% that we talked about, <clears throat> plus some additional funds that are required. Um, we're required to hire a planning director um, that has a planning background. So that's gonna cost some additional funds. Um, and there were a couple of market adjustments to some of the planning staff because we found out that they were underpaid as compared to um, what they could receive elsewhere. On the inspection side, we have a total budget of 460,000, up from just under 405 from the previous year. And there's two reasons for that. So in the inspections, we have uh, an increase and that's just the 9% range. And then the travel, we're seeing additional travel as well as the increase in costs with regard to fuel. So that's up from 35,000 to 42,000. So our total planning and inspection services are budgeted at $1,067,682. 
For fiscal services, we have bank charges of 9,000. We are seeing more people pay their um, fees through credit cards, which obviously costs us more money. Um, we have 7,000 in capital assets, which is a computer equipment. We did have a second previous year deficit to bring in of 5757, and then our non-refundable HST, giving a total of 33897 <clears throat> and total expenses of 1,795,039. So what that translates into is 3.8 cents per 100 for tax, tax rate. It won't let me skip pages for some reason. Okay, so this is where we see our capital budget. So the 7,000 that we talked about is to be paid through the operating fund for computer equipment. Which brings us to the budget for solid waste services. So for solid waste, we've based the budget on 81,000 tons per year. Um, you'll recall in prior years, we have used 79,000, um, but we are seeing an increase in our tonnage. So we were comfortable with increasing the budget to 81,000. That provides an extra about 200,000 in revenue. Um, and then for C&D, we're keeping that consistent at 6,000 tons. So our total revenue for 2023 is budgeted at $10,122,015. Our revenue from other sources, which includes the majority coming from the institutional, commercial, and industrial sector, so our businesses, um, $6,654,015, which means that revenue of 3468 would come from the municipal side of the garbage. So we are budgeting for 2023 no increase to our tipping fee. That would stay consistent at $102. Um, and it's important to note that we estimate this tonnage, but that is not necessarily what you would pay. The municipality pays based on what the actual tonnage is that comes into the landfill. So if Arcadia's tonnage is more or less, this number would be, would be different. So it's a little bit different than all our other divisions in that that is an estimate. Um, and you pay based on the actual. <laughs> on the capital side of things, we have a total budget of 1,730,670,000 ,670 of that would come from our own internal funds and we would borrow a million and 60,000. And we'll get into the detail behind that when we get to the capital page. So from the revenue side, the industrial, commercial, and institutional revenue is up to 4916000 And again, that's due to increased uh, volume of tonnage. C&D remains the same. Our toll gate is up to 34000 Asbestos is up to 45000 We've seen a slight decrease in our cardboard. So you can see the 348800 there as compared to 358000 and then metals is down slightly as well. The major increase to our revenue and what is allowing us to keep that tipping fee at 102,000 and not have to increase is this second previous year surplus that we're bringing into 2023. If we did not have this surplus, we would be looking at a tipping fee increase. So that is what's allowing us to, to keep the tipping fee consistent. So that's something to keep in mind because that's not something that's gonna be there in your 2024 budget. Interest income, we've decreased to 10,000 and then we have 140,000 for the, the disposal of capital assets. So those are the capital assets that we're going to be replacing. So total revenue from other sources is the 6,654,000. On the expense side of things, we have uh, the allocation from corporate services of 371,000. <coughs> That's up 25,000. Um, the director's office, 
So that would be uh, it's up to 726,833, and that's simply the range increase. We have an increase in our liability insurance, as we talked about, all our insurance premiums are up. Professional services, so that would be our engineering services, is up from 96,000 to 108,000. remainder are relatively consistent with the prior year. So total administration are budgeted at $1,561,189, up from $1,465,000. Our station and building costs are relatively consistent with the prior year, a total of $289,000. Machinery and equipment, no surprise here, that's up quite substantially. Uh, to a total budget of 1857000 The driving factor behind that is the price of diesel. Uh, so that's up 329000 from the previous year's budget. And then our insurance premiums are up, so it's up from 152000 to 270000 For landfill operations, we have a total budget of 2,840,000. The increases there are to site and road maintenance, that's the cost of rock, as well as our cell costs are up about 11,500. Our scale house is up slightly and that's just uh, relating to the scale house personnel. Waste diversion which would be the recycling budget, has a total budget of 1,438,000. Personnel has a budget of 1,036,000, which is up from 828 in the previous year. That is allowing us to have a full staff of um, employees at the recycling facility. Um, and that assumes that everyone is full-time with benefits. So right now we have a few three to four staff members that are are not on benefits, um, but this would allow them to come on to be full-time with benefits. And then you have your increases to fuel as well, to just under 80,000. Hazardous waste has slight increases for a total of 212,000. So total operations at the landfill has a budget of just under 7 million. For fiscal services, we have a total of 1,560,000. Uh, our debt repayment is up slightly to 782,000. Our asset acquisition, um, that includes the purchase of a water truck, hydro cedar truck, and a paving. So that's a budget of 170,000. We've budgeted to put 50,000 to the operating reserve. And then our transfer to the generation facility um, to balance that fund, actually, we were able to decrease it from the previous year. So it only needed just under 35,000 to balance that fund, which is good. We have 175,000 in non-refundable HST. That's just because our other costs are up. So obviously HST costs would be up as well. So that all added together gives us operating expenses of $10,122,015. So that's up about $772,000 from the previous year. And the three contributing factors, salaries and benefits, insurance, fuel. Pretty much you can add the three of those up and that's where you get the increase. Um, but as I said before, the two revenue sources, the increase in tonnage of 2,000 tons, as well as that second previous year surplus, allowed us to balance that budget with half, without having to increase the tipping fee. Um, but I do want to warn you, because I always like to look to the future and say, okay, what does this mean next year? Because we know we won't have that second previous year surplus unless, unless there's something that happens this year that we aren't expecting. So if those costs, like the fuel costs, um, do not go back down in the next year. We will be looking at a tipping fee increase probably in the range of about $10. Now, the other thing that's on, um, that's coming down the pipe is um, changes to the PPP. And Brett probably is better to speak to this than I am, 
but my understanding is the province will be making a decision on that um, in the next little bit, hopefully in the next couple months. Um, so if we don't have those recycling expenses that we have to cover, that is a significant savings on our budget as well. So we would not have to increase the tipping fee to that extent. So for capital for solid waste services, we are budgeting to replace three larger pieces of equipment, those being the excavator at a cost of 485,000, the loader at a cost of 275,000, and the packer truck at 300,000. And those would be funded by a debenture um, through the Municipal Capital Finance Corp for five years. So a total of a million and 60,000 to be borrowed. The other projects we have on the go, as I mentioned, we have a water truck, a hydro cedar truck and paving for a total of 170,000. Those would be paid for from the operating fund. And then lastly, we have the Baylor chain. So we had talked about doing this work actually in 2022, um, but when we received the bids for it, uh, it was significantly higher than what the engineer's estimate was. So we decided to defer the work because um, we didn't have the funds at that time uh, in our budget. So what we are proposing is to pay for that cost out of our capital reserve um, for 500,000, and that would leave a balance of 1.5 million in that capital reserve after that work is done. And then the only other thing which is not listed on here because it's actually a lease, but it is required to be approved by the board um, because it's considered borrowing from the municipal um, capital borrowing board um, would be a lease of a crew cab. And the estimated value of that crew cab would be 70,000. So with the new debt, as well as the debt that we're going to be borrowing for the power generation facility, our estimated debt service ratio would be just under 13%. So well under that 15% target that we've set as a maximum. Right. So that brings us to our power generation facility. So we have a total budget for power generation of 1,034,833. 34,833 we've talked about is to be paid through the solid waste operating fund, leaving a million to be sold in actual power. So you can see we sell to MB Power, that's the estimated kilowatts. This is the current rate where we are receiving for a million dollars in revenue. Not associated to that million, but a different million would be the one million to um, refit engine number two, which is meeting at 60,000 um, hour requirement to be replaced uh, in 2023. So that's the million that you see there. So on the revenue side, we have the 34,833 coming in from solid waste operating fund. And then we have expenses the allocation from corporate services of 21,806. We have personnel costs of just under 105,000. And then on machinery and equipment, we have an increase to our insurance costs as well as the price of oil has gone up. So it's gone from 55,000 to 80,000. So total operations are 396,817. We will have a new debenture in 2023. So that would be for the first refit on the first engine. Um, so that's why you're seeing an increase in the interest expense, as well as an increase to the debt repayment. The good news is in 2023, our original debenture will be paid off. So that will um, decrease, but then we'll have the new debt for refit of engine number two. Our second previous year deficit was much less than it was in 2022. It's only $970 that we have to bring in. 
um, for a total fiscal services of 616,210 and total expenditures of 1,034,833. So that brings us to our new services. And the new services are, oh, I should mention, this is the capital. This is the engine refit on engine number two for a total cost of a million dollars and to be borrowed from the Municipal Capital Finance Corp for a term of five years. So the new services, there's a few of them, but their budgets are relatively straightforward. So we have budgeted 639,513. 600,000 of that is the estimate of a third party service provider. 39,513 is the allocation from corporate services. Um, so that is allocated based on your share of the tax base, keeping in mind that Fredericton is not included in the tourism promotion. They contribute directly to Fredericton Tourism if that's the route that we go. And so, for instance, Central York, their share would be 51,942 and so on. There's no revenue sources for regional tourism. And as I said, the expenses consist of the allocation from corporate services and then professional services to have an external provider provide that service. There's no capital. For economic development, we have a total budget of $1,439,513. Consists of a 1.4 for an external service provider, and the 39,513 for the allocation from corporate services. Allocating that based on the tax base, you can see what each member's share would be. Here's the detail behind those two expenses. Bringing us to community development. So for community development, we have expenses of $141,013. We have revenue of $50,000, which would come from ESIC, leaving the net amount to be raised from the members of $91,013. This one is calculated based 50% on your share of the population and 50% based on your share of the tax base to give you the member charges. There's the 50,000 to come in from ESIC. And for community development, we have 39,000 allocation from corporate services. We are going to hire an employee for this service. So their salaries and benefits are there, an amount for them to travel, and then some administrative costs totaling the 14113. For regional transportation services, we have a budget of 299,200. Again, this is based on 50% of your share of the population and 50% based on your tax base share to give you the member's share here. And their budget. is an allocation from corporate services of 39,200, uh, having a service provider for 260,000, giving you the total cost of 299,200. There's a small amount in the budget for the public safety committee, 6,179. This is each member's share of that expense. And those expenses consist of 4,179 from an allocation from corporate services, 2,000 for printing and copying for a total of 6,179. And then the last budget, we're almost there, is the Regional Sport Recreation and Culture Infrastructure. And we've budgeted a total of 20,000 for this. 
um, leaving the member share, as you can see here. And that 20,000 is just for administration. And again, if any of these budgets are over or under, what that will do is produce either a surplus or a deficit, which would then be brought into that specific division in two years time. So what does that mean at the end of the day? At the very last page, you will see this is the new cost. So it does not include local planning or solid waste services, which you were already paying for. Cooperative and regional planning, you were paying a portion, but it has gone up significantly. So I have included um, that amount in these calculations. But what you can see at the end of the day is this is what the increase to your tax rate would be based on these new services. So that pretty much summarizes uh, the information I wanted to provide to you with regard to the budget. Is there any questions that I can answer at this time? Uh, or Mary Kay? Yes. I, I just have a question back on the, uh, I don't know what page it is because these aren't numbered, but it has to do with the uh, solid waste, uh, I'll call it collection. Yep. And I don't see anything there for the area that I'm going to be part of, which is Harvey, Harvey Rural Community. Uh, so it would be SW slash one, Peter, and that's a great question. And I meant to point that out. So yeah. what we did when we when I originally did this up, Harvey, I, as I understood it, was all going to another area's facility for solid waste. But then I've come to someone told me uh, that Prince William and Kingsclear, some of their waste is coming to us. So we have estimated that about 435 tons representing Prince William and Kingsclear will come to us. The remaining Harvey tonnage will go to the other solid waste facility. So I'm gonna add that into this sheet so that you can see your tonnage for your specific area. No, and that's fine. So basically what, what this budget is saying is that for solid waste uh, pickup, nothing's changing with with that, like because Kings Clear and, and Prince William, we're going to uh, in RSC eleven, and the others were in RSC twelve. That's right, Harvey. And, okay, thank you. And if I could uh, just interject, uh, Mr. Chair, the, that's going to be the uh, the case for the next five years. Uh, Harvey's just recently executed a uh, five year collection contract with. Uh, with a, uh, an existing service provider to haul material to um, Hemlock Knoll. Uh, that would be the Southwest Regional Service Commission. And um, um, that contract will be in, in place for the next five years. At that point, they will, presumably they'll begin bringing their uh, material to, uh, to our landfill. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Okay, are there any other questions or comments or whatever. Yeah, Mr. That... Chair, I've got a question. Um, sure. uh, if you permit me. Um, yeah, of course. Mary Kay, I, I, I absolutely appreciate the value of having a second year previous surplus uh, wipe out an increase in our tipping fees. Um, but I want to ask a question respective of the elephant in the room. Uh, is there any policy things that we can do to replicate that situation entering into next year? Um, or was it a second year previous surplus characterized by incidental non-policy related financial phenomenon? Great question. Um, so typically what we do is starting in about August, we start projecting where are we gonna be at the end of the year and what do we, where do we need to slow spending? Like what do we have and what are we gonna look like? My ideal in an ideal world is I like to have a surplus somewhere between 100 and 200,000. So if I know I'm gonna have a big surplus, we talk about, okay, let's put it maybe to an operating reserve, let's put it to a capital reserve so that we have more flexibility with what we're gonna do in the future. Um, we had a couple of um, reports that came in. So we had some actuarial valuations that we didn't have the information to include them in their projections and they came in at less cost than we expected. 
Um, so that's why you're seeing that larger than expected surplus in that one year. So it's not something that I expect to continue. It was because we had to make a uh, adjustments to some of our liabilities that were on our balance sheet. So it, not so much a policy thing, just kind of a happy coincidence. Oh, fair enough. Um, I need to be in a good position to answer that question that I just asked you when my colleagues ask me the same thing. Um, so having a very clear answer um, is, is certainly appreciated. Um, and the only other question I have, Mr. Chair, is uh, uh, with respect to the new uh, mandated service areas and the service provision contracts we have, um, how do we get more information about uh, what ends up in their uh, lump sum costs that they're pushing onto the RSC? And I'll, I'll uh, go to the, uh, the transportation one per se. Um, so if I have uh, colleagues around the council table or other constituents that are curious about, you know, what the Fredericton uh, contribution to transit, um, you know, is delivering in terms of services, infrastructure or offerings, um, who do I have that conversation with to figure out, you know, the value for dollar spent piece? I, I may be the best uh, to answer that question, Greg. Yeah. Yeah, I, so that's the one new mandate that hasn't gone through the uh, advisory committee or the working group yet. Oh, um, can I interrupt you, Brett, for a second? Um, if it's a special case, um, I shouldn't use transit. I just want to know as a general kind of rule, sure. you know, how do we go back to the service providers um, to find out? Sure. Yeah. So, so I, I would expect the uh, the scope of services would be uh, covered in. Uh, um, detail in uh, any contracts that we uh, develop and execute. And those will all be brought forward to the board for, uh, for review. Uh, okay. They'll also be accessible through staff. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that my understanding of that was the same as, as yours and the, and the rest of the committees. Um, yeah. And I, and I recognize that the transportation piece is a little unique at the moment, but it, but it may not be moving forward to the budget year. So anyway, thank you. Those are my only two questions, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. An excellent presentation. I agree, Fred. That was fantastic. Okay, does anyone else have any questions or comments for Mary Kay or, uh, or uh, Brett? Mr. Chair, yes, I would add uh, to Greg's comment, transportation is a good one because I, I notice it is not an unsubstantial number for us that we would have to justify to, I'd have to justify to council and others, even though we spend a lot of time on economic development <laughs> and tourism, which as you all know, I wholeheartedly support. Um, you know, I just need the right talking points and and logic to explain to others to kind of uh, spread the good word. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Okay, so I uh, if there's nothing else. I will uh, thank you all for attending on this Friday afternoon. It's not too bad out there right now. It was going to rain. It probably will about now. Just started here. <laughs> okay, there you go. Live from Gage Town. <laughs> yeah, well, I think it might be a little bit here. It's, it'll be here eventually. So thank you very much, Mary Kay. Another excellent presentation. And uh, with that, I'm going to adjourn the meeting. Enjoy your weekend. Thank you. Yes, thank, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you Mr. Thank Chair. You, well done, all.